Thanks for clicking on to the Saturday edition of Vogue's European Outlook. A very busy weekend of weather coming up. We do have, of course, milder conditions now starting to filter in across the British Isles. And we are seeing treacherous ice conditions in response to that. Of course, the ground still well below freezing thanks to a 10-day period where temperatures have been struggling really to get much above the freezing mark. And of course, with the day after day of sub-freezing days, temperatures anywhere from minus 8 uh, to minus 12 Celsius during the overnight period, the ground has continued to turn colder and colder. So of course, as the milder runs in, we can see a combination of different things. We've got the uh, you know rain changing over the snow through the atmosphere if the column's deep enough with the cold. We have rain falling on the frozen surfaces because the Warm layer is not that far off the surface. You have temperatures above freezing at head height. You could, it could be minus two like it was this morning uh, when I arrived home uh, from um, my overnight shift. The air temperature, according to the car gauge anyway, I know it's subject to question accuracy-wise and whatnot, but it was reading minus two and it was, it was raining outside. So, of course, we've got um, a, a very significant... Uh, ice risk. I know there has been freezing rain reports anywhere from Devon in the southwest to Glasgow in the north. Now, this is the picture of the Met Office tw uh, tweet for today. We've got plenty of shower activity running in across the north of Wales into the greater Liverpool and Manchester area. We've got another band of shower activity moving through the central belt of Scotland, as you can see. And we have got, um, with low pressure to the north, we've got some of these showers running into the far north of Scotland also. So it's a, a rather mixed picture, but it's um, a sign of, of things to come as we progress through the next couple of days. Uh, the air mass will continue to grow warmer, but of course the residual effects of the cold will linger on as well. So of course uh, that means that we've got a, a series of warnings out there, um, uh, you know, uh, in, in place today uh, and more so tomorrow uh, for areas of dense freezing fog across parts of Northern Ireland and of course uh, with sub-freezing temperatures and that moisture from the fog allowing ice to build up on, on treed surfaces. Uh, this is of course the warm-up that we are expecting to see tomorrow. Temperatures as high as 13 Celsius uh, on Monday even in the north of Scotland. What a difference that's going to make uh, of course, we do have the yellow warning across uh, all of Wales, a large swathe of uh, of England for um for tomorrow. As of course the I think it's going to be a mainly rain event, but of course with the you know the ground temperature so cold, uh, ice is going to be a significant problem. We've also got a yellow warning for the north of England and for Scotland, freezing rain and snow and strong winds moving northwards uh, during the course of tomorrow and into Monday. And, of course, the issues that we can see from freezing rain uh, is scenes like this, if I can try and get to the appropriate tweet. This was the scene this morning on the uh, Clyde Tunnel overpass in Glasgow. Um, very, very nasty conditions indeed. All these cars look as if they've been damaged. The road, of course, the overpass over the M8 should have been closed. That looks as if these cars had no chance crossing this overpass across the M8 motorway in Glasgow. So, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of insurance claims are going to come out of this, of course, as these cars did not realise as they were crossing this section of, of roadway and what they were going to be facing but this is a prime example of what we could be expecting to see over the next few days regarding this uh, scenario here current temperatures here as of recording still cold across many areas of the country we've got temperatures barely above the freezing mark across scotland but again slightly above freezing this time yesterday with temperatures of minus 10 at Altnahara, minus 6, minus 7 at 10. Um, but the air mass is slowly starting to warm up in response. You can see here a big difference, sixes and sevens all the way down to Cornwall, as you can see. But of course, as that moisture moves in, we're going to see 
a significant um, situation developing with regards to, I think, ICE is the biggest risk of all here. So looking at the, the GFS here, we can see here, this is off the GFS, um, that we've got the this scenario taking place. So another fairly cold night, by the way, clear skies, light winds, another frost. And this, of course, the overnight cooling is going to set the scene for what comes, unfortunately, tomorrow. So we've got this band of rain increase in the wind. We've got a nice squeeze in the isobars between the high over Europe, the area of low pressure at 977 millibars to the west. And of course, we've got a direct south to southwesterly airflow coming straight out of the subtropics. And as that moisture moves inland, down at low levels, you're talking about rain uh, with freezing rain, of course. Then with any kind of height, you've probably got a rain sleep mix and really it's over the tops of parts of the Welsh mountains and uh, and high, very high ground over England, we're going to see snow. It's really uh, once you get into the north of England, so the Cumbrian Fells, the North Pennines, Southern Uplands, high parts of the Central Belt, that is where we could see a period of prolonged snowfall during the course of tomorrow before that that warmth starts to mix down to lower and lower levels. I think we're going to start the day sub-freezing in many areas. By the end of the day tomorrow, we could be talking about double-digit temperatures. So we're going to see the warming trend taking place through the course of tomorrow. We could have a significant snow, even blizzard threat to the central highlands tomorrow. But notice here that by the time we reach 1800 tomorrow, it's it's showing up in the GFS as rainfall on the north coast of Scotland here. Then we've got um, kind of other areas of persistent heavy rainfall moving in on that southwesterly airflow. And then we're in well and truly in the cold air. Um, looking at the snow prospects according to the GFS here, um, this is how it's looking. So it's really only over the next 24 hours. So plenty of areas have got snow cover. A large swathe of Scotland now is snow covered. We've got plenty of sections of England, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland. Well, maybe not so much Ireland, but certainly parts of the northwest of Ireland seeing snow cover. We are going to see a slight expanding of that, I think, over particularly central and northern portions of Scotland. And then, of course, as the warmer air starts to move in, that is significantly going to shrink over the next 72-hour period, of course, as the milder conditions move in. Let's have a look at the ECMWF snow prospects. Back to the current picture. Plenty of snow cover across many areas of the British Isles. We see that expanding according to the ECMWF, as you can see here, even over England, if you notice here, parts of Wales. Then over central Scotland, over the north of Scotland, as that moisture lifts northwards. And then, of course, as the GFS predicts, we see that snow cover um, you know, shrink significantly. Let's have a quick look at the ECMWF 850 temperatures, and we can see the, the, the return of colder, uh, sorry, the return of milder conditions, should I say here. So, of course, over the, the course of today, that area of low pressure, the north, has been dragging, dragging in um, air off the Atlantic. So, of course, it hasn't been as cold, hence why we're seeing the warmer temperatures starting to take place. Then, as we progress through the course of tonight, we've got a little bit of cooler air coming in into the north of the UK. But then, as you can see here, we've got the significant surge of milder air at 850 temperatures up as high as 6 or 7 Celsius by the time we reach 6 o'clock on Monday morning. And we're all in that uh, milder air mass here. And then, of course, we're followed by, uh, you know, maritime chilly air. So I suppose polar maritime air, you could say, uh, mixing in uh, on the back side. Of course, it's all eyes on next week and a massive amount of uncertainty regarding next week. I think what I would... Be inclined to say this is a mediogram chart here of the GFS model and um, this is the 850 temperatures here so at the moment we're well uh, below normal at minus 5 at 850 over London so this is London 
there's that big surge of warmth by the time we reach um, later tomorrow and into Monday. You notice here that as we progress uh, through the course of next week, we get a dip into the early portion of next week. And then, of course, as we progress through next week, the spacing of each individual uh, individual model run uh, becomes greater because the uncertainty is, is, is greater. So it looks as if what happens is we go from minus 5, 850 over London, way up to plus 7. Then we take this dip into the early and middle portion of next week, so around the 21st, 22nd. You notice here that we've got this dip back below normal again, but that the reason why is because we've got this area of low pressure moving from west to east. It takes a little while to do that. The colder air comes in on the back side of that, and of course, if you look at the last couple of videos, I explain in greater detail from a hemispheric view what's going on with the jet stream and the complexity of the pattern. But then as we progress through to the 22nd, 23rd, according to the, the, the GFS ensemble, we go back above normal at 8, 850 over the greater London area. And then, you know, it, so the consensus is that the majority of these model runs has it above normal in the run up to Christmas. And then, of course, beyond that, um, there's a huge spread in the model runs. Now, this is for Glasgow. Uh, in fact, aye, this is for Glasgow. You can see here uh, at minus five at the moment, then we we'll take this massive surge up to plus six, plus seven. So the same as London. So if we've got the same amount of warmth at 850 over Glasgow as we do London. Then, of course, we we'll take the dip back below average. And then as we progress towards the uh, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, very close to the average line at 850. So it looks like the further north you go, the greater the chance that the air mass will be colder. And of course, that would then suggest that the possibility of snow is greater the further north you go. This is for Inverness. Below normal at the moment goes away above towards uh, tomorrow in the Monday. Then we take a dip back to average. And then as we progress, this is interesting. As we progress, towards the christmas period so of course next thursday friday and then of course saturday christmas eve sunday christmas day it actually looks as if the majority of the models are below the average line so that is quite interesting to see which would indicate to me that there's a greater chance of seeing colder as well as snowier um around the 22nd 23rd all the way through the 26th for the further north you go now if you look at the gfs ensemble for the upcoming five day period we can see that we are warming up of course slightly below normal across the far north if you notice ireland england wales southern scotland above normal a little bit of war uh, colder than normal across central portions of europe today six to ten is interesting look at this here this is of course incorporating the christmas period it's actually below average, according to the GFS Ensemble, for Scotland, warmer than normal across England, Wales, colder than normal across Ireland and Northern Ireland. Look at Europe, look at how warm it is. And then the 11 to 15 day is shown actually slightly below average temperatures for the Christmas to New Year period. A lot of uncertainty regarding this pattern. My hunch is that the Atlantic is now coming back into to the driving force but um you know it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't get cold so i find that very very interesting indeed finally december 2022 the central england temperature is now at 0 0.5 celsius this is off shran Bruin's twitter feed so we're now perhaps the lowest so um to date this up until the 16th of December, so the 1st to the 16th of December, it's actually for the Central England temperature, the 11th coldest first through 16th period since 1772. That is significant. And it is the coldest temperature for month to date since 2010. It's the only one 
that has been uh, colder was 2010 versus the, the, the first 16 days of this month. Amazing.